more announcements for later in the service, but there are three that I'd like to make at the onset. First is to thank everyone who's helping with today's service, including our producers, Laura Beatty and Aaron Shaw, and our lector and assisting minister today is Jody Lehman. So we're thankful for those who help lead. This is the first Sunday in the month of October. And so this will be for us a communion service. If you have a little wine or grape juice or bread in your house that you would like to share with those who are gathered wherever you are sitting right now, I would invite you at some point in the early part of the service to send a delegate for that reason. Because it's the first Sunday of October, we're also gonna be blessing animals in this service. And uh, that will happen towards the end of the service before the benediction and the sending hymn. Thank you to everyone who sent in a picture of, of a beloved pet. And uh, we will be showing those pictures and reading those names. If you didn't get a chance to send us a photo, and your animal is willing to sit with you during this service, you'll get an opportunity to, to share that blessing with them in a few minutes. We're going to begin with our opening hymn. Morgan and Elaine Dunn will be leading us. It's hymn 167, Now the Feast and Celebration. joys of technology. We seem to have had a, a little glitch. So we're going to continue with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. If you printed out a worship booklet at your home, you'll find this right on the front cover and a reminder that we're going to use this booklet throughout the month of October. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the Lord be with you and let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, and it begins in the ninth chapter. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, They were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, I'm going to ask if we're able to go to our children's sermon. It's pre-recorded, and we're having a little internet difficulties. Aaron and Laura, can we uh, go to that now? Hi, everybody. This is story time with Pastor Bill. We're reading today from the Spark Story Bible. And I want to remind you of the story we read last week before I read a new story. Last week, we read a story about how Isaac and Rebecca met each other and got married. And here's how that story ended. After Isaac and Rebecca got married, Isaac prayed for children. Isaac and Rebecca had twin boys named Esau and Jacob. Isaac's children were Abraham's grandchildren, just like God had promised. And I didn't notice last week when we read our story, but do you see these babies in their mama's arm? That's Esau right here. And that's Jacob right here. And doesn't Esau have a funny look on his face? Okay, let's read this week's story. It's called Isaac's Blessing. Rebecca and Isaac asked God for a child. God gave them not one baby, but two. Twins, kick, jab. Rebecca could feel the babies pushing and pulling on each other inside of her. God, she prayed, why are my babies fighting? They're in a race to be born first, God answered. Your family will be different. Your younger son will be the leader of the older one. This was a surprise to Rebecca. The oldest child was usually the leader of all of the brothers and sisters. Esau was born first. He was hairy and red. Jacob was born next. He had smooth skin. The race was so close that Jacob was born holding on to Esau's foot. Before long, the twins grew into men. They were very different. Esau was big and strong. Esau made Isaac very proud because he was a hunter. Jacob was smaller than Esau and very quiet. Rebecca loved that Jacob stayed around home. When Isaac became old and blind, it was time to give his blessing to his oldest child, passing on the leadership of the family. Since Isaac couldn't see, he rubbed Esau's hairy arms to make sure he had the right son. Esau, he said, bring me dinner and I will bless you. Rebecca was listening. Jacob, she whispered, hurry, cover your arms with hairy goat skins to fool your father. Rebecca remembered that God said Jacob would make a better leader for the family than Esau. So, Jacob dressed up like Esau and brought Isaac dinner. 
the plan worked. Jacob tricked Isaac into making him the new leader of the family. And our Bible has a little question on the bottom, which would be fun to talk to mom and dad about after church. How would you feel if you were tricked by your brother as Esau was? And now let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day and for all the people you've put in the world, including Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Esau. We thank you for all the people, even though they sometimes squabble and fight with each other. We ask that you would bless us so that we might be a blessing to other people. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Amen. We're uh, in the middle of a series of sermons about Old Testament characters and their stories. And uh, we have found that it's kind of helpful to let the children's sermon kind of be a big picture overview of the passage that we want to think about today. So you just heard that big overview. Our adult lesson for today comes from the book of Genesis. It's in the 27th chapter. And it's that portion of the story where Jacob is receiving his father's blessing, even though his father thinks he's blessing Esau. Jacob went to his father, Isaac, and said, my father, yes, he said, which son are you? Jacob answered his father, I'm your firstborn son, Esau. I did what you told me. Come now, sit up and eat of my game so that you can give me your personal blessing. Isaac said, so soon? How did you get it so quickly? because your God cleared the way for me. Isaac said, come close, son. Let me touch you. Are you really my son, Esau? So Jacob moved close to his father, Isaac. Isaac, the voice is Jacob's voice. The hands are the hands He didn't recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's. But as he was about to bless him, he pressed him. You're sure you're my son Esau? Yes, I am. Isaac said, bring the food so that I can eat of my son's game and give you my personal blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate. He also brought him wine and he drank. Then Isaac said, come close son and kiss me. He came close and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of his clothes. Finally, he blessed him. Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the open country blessed by God. May God give you of heaven's dew and earth's bounty of grain and wine. May peoples serve you and nations honor you. You will master your brothers and your mother's sons will honor you. Those who curse you will be cursed and those who bless you will be blessed. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we are following a family and uh, you are beginning to see uh, the first branches, the trunk of that family tree, God called Abraham and Sarah. God said, if you walk with me, I'll walk with you. I'm going to bless the whole world through you and your descendants, which means despite your old age, you're going to yet have a son. And when Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 years old. They had that promised son. His name was Isaac. If you were with us last weekend, you heard about how Isaac met his wife, Rebecca. How Abraham had sent a servant back to his home country to 
to find a wife, how that servant prayed for God to help and how God arranged a signal when the right woman appeared. Rebecca and Isaac were married. And while Rebecca had the same trouble getting pregnant that Sarah had, God intervened and blessed them with children. If you remember that Abraham and Sarah, or Abraham at least, had two sons, Ishmael, the oldest, and Isaac, the youngest. Now we hear that Isaac and Rebekah have two sons, Esau, the oldest, and Jacob, the youngest. If you remember that both stories include the rejection of the older in favor of the younger, you may think to yourself that you sense a pattern developing, and you're right. Because God's blessing was meant for this particular family. And if a family is going to be blessed, then three challenges present themselves. Number one, will that clown find a spouse anywhere? Number two, will a child be born? And number three, if there's more than one child, who will negotiate the lines of succession? Where will the blessing go? in the next generation, a pattern is developing for this family. Which brings us to today's decidedly unattractive story about a son and his mother tricking his father, her husband, when he's old and blind about a, a brother and his mother stealing a blessing that rightfully belongs to one of their siblings. And God seems to be involved in this unattractive story. God either predicts it will happen or wills that it will happen. And regardless of whether God predicts it or wills it, God seems to reward the bad behavior. So I want to invite you today to think with me about two mysteries. And because they're mysteries, I'm just going to warn you ahead of time. I can't tell you what the answer to the mystery is. I can only wonder with you about it. But I know this, since it's in our scripture, since it is our appointed lesson for today, that these mysteries are worth your time. They're worth wondering about. Mystery number one, God seems always to prefer the younger of two brothers. And let me tell you the examples. I, I made a little list. I don't even think it's a complete list, but it's enough to get the picture across. God preferred Abel over Cain. God preferred Isaac over Ishmael. God preferred Jacob over Esau. God prefers Joseph over his 10 older brothers. God prefers Moses over Aaron. God chose David over his six older brothers. God chose Solomon over his older brothers. And when Jesus started telling stories, it seems clear that the prodigal was chosen over his more righteous, more obedient older brother. Why does God prefer the youngest of the pair? When I've been wondering about this, I think that several things could be going on. Since the younger brother is always the weaker of the two brothers in terms of their rights, in terms of their traditions, it may be that God is showing preference for the weaker party, especially since sin affects all human relationships. So that when somebody is stronger, when somebody has more power, because of the power of sin at work in them, usually, almost always, that power is used to hurt and oppress the weak. Maybe God chooses the younger because the younger is weaker. It may also be that strong, powerful people tend to have a sense that they have accomplished everything on their own. They tend to suffer from the sin of self-righteousness. 
so that even when they are receiving God's blessing, they have a tendency to forget about the blessing and to think they've earned it all. And while God seems to have a clear preference for the younger of a pair of brothers, it should be pointed out that in most cases, the older brother is hardly punished. In today's lesson, for example, we hear about Esau and Jacob, and Jacob was chosen, but Esau will become a rich person with a large family and an abundance of children. Typically, the older brother doesn't get what they're entitled to in scripture, but they're hardly punished. Maybe this choosing of the weaker brother, maybe it's an expression of the gospel, which is not that people get what they deserve, but that God's grace is always and only a gift for those who don't deserve it. Mystery number two. What is God's role in the messiness of life? In this particular family, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca and their children that follow, in this particular family, God seems to be up to it, uh, up to God's ears. That's where the spouses come. It's from God. That's where the scenes come from. There, from. so not just all those good things, but also the bad things. Someone gets tricked. Someone gets cheated. God's involved in that too. Is God involved in the messiness of our lives? I mean. Somebody gets divorced or somebody gets cancer or there's a car accident or there's a pandemic. Is God in all of that as well? And it's kind of a mystery and you know the problem. God is good and God is almighty and bad things sometimes happen. And if you wanna say, that it's not God's fault like me, then you say, well, it's, it's sin or it's human freedom that causes these bad things. But if God's almighty, well, what do we say about the messiness of this life? Is God willing it to happen? Is God predicting that it will happen? Is God involved in the aftermath? And while it's a mystery and I couldn't possibly explain all the details, I can tell you what my heart has led me to believe in these 55 years of my life. Yes, God is involved. Walking with God's people in good times and in bad, bringing about God's grace at every turn. And in those instances, when we don't yet see how God is involved, then don't Christians have to say to each other, just wait, just be patient. Because the story of your life, the story of my life is long and complicated. Sometimes today's tragedy may well become tomorrow's greatest blessings. And as I said, it's a mystery. And maybe your long and complicated life has led you to different conclusions. If it has, I'd like to hear about it. Because the idea that God is with us in good times and in bad times, the idea that God is bringing a blessing even in the aftermath of a tragedy seems to be the faith of Abraham and Sarah. It seems to be the faith of Isaac and Rebecca, time will tell if in fact it's the faith of Jacob and Esau. And as a preview of coming attractions, next weekend's lesson is about an occasion when Jacob literally wrestled with God and demanded a blessing. So I hope you'll be here next weekend to hear that part of the story as well. 
Amen. And now we're going to continue with our hymn of the day, which is hymn 824. This is my father's world. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Elaine. We continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, Aaron and Laura, I don't know if Jody Lehman has made herself known on Zoom? Yes, here we go. Thank you. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear th fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope 
and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jody. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. And we would invite you to turn on your microphones and your cameras and your gallery view and to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace, everybody. 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 <laughs> Peace, everybody. Peace be with you. 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 God's peace, everybody. It's so good to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. You are the best part of my week. Just a couple of announcements to share with you before we move into our Holy Communion service. So this is your, your last call. If you want to grab some juice or wine and a little bit of bread to share around your particular tables. I hope you are including your church council in your regular prayers I've been a pastor now for almost 20 years, and this has been the longest, hardest period of decision-making I can remember any council going through. They are doing, a, in my opinion, an admirable job of watching the situation and, and making difficult and important decisions. At our meeting on Monday, we decided that this was gonna be an outdoor October with the weather being, Forecast to be pretty nice for the month. We have added a Saturday service at five o'clock outdoors. We've uh, now are trying a Sunday morning at 1030 outdoors and God blessed us yesterday. It was kind of cold and cloudy all day long about 10 minutes before five o'clock. The clouds parted and the sun came out and we had a beautiful service, including some, some three dimensional pets that were in attendance. So Pray for your council and plan to join us as much as you can in October outdoors, and we continue to monitor the situation. Today, after our Sunday worship service, Penny Shemp is going to be leading uh, a really interesting class in the month of October. It's going to meet twice a week, so Sunday after church and Wednesday night at 7 p.m., on Sunday, you can just stay on this call to join the class. On Wednesday, there'll be a separate log in which we will get out to everyone. The class is called Rediscovering Our Identity as a Child of God. And this is part of the social impacts teams work on uh, racial justice issues. So I hope you'll consider taking part in, in this class. We are getting ready for a first communion celebration with our some of our youngest members. The class is going to be on Wednesday, October 28th at 6 p.m. And this is to help these young people prepare to receive their first communion on All Saints Sunday, which is the first Sunday of November. If you have a young person in your life, a child or a grandchild, that you think would like to participate in this, we usually think at starting at about first grade and up that kids are ready to join this celebration. So we hope you'll consider that. Sunday school is underway in our church. If you missed the first couple of weeks, no worries. There's always time to jump in. You can uh, find us on a Facebook page. We send out materials that uh, everyone hopefully has. You can call the church and we'll get you connected. We, uh, we uh, were sad about 
Ethan Fields' resignation last week, and uh, we wish him the best of luck in all of his future endeavors. One need that this creates for the church is some extra Zoom producers. It is not uh, the hardest job in the whole wide world, but not everyone is comfortable doing it. So if, if this is a skill you think you might have and be willing to share with the church occasionally, if you'd give me a call, we will get you scheduled in. And uh, if there's any training that's needed, we'll make sure you get that as well. I wanna mention some anniversaries, birthdays, and prayer concerns. Anniversaries this week include Dave and Shelly M and Niles and Shelly N. So two Shelleys this week. Birthdays include Trisha G and Jill L. For our prayer concerns, I hope you have been praying both for the president and for the first lady this week on the announcement of their positive COVID-19 test. And uh, prayers for the president are a bipartisan or nonpartisan matter in this case. So we want to lift them up in our prayers and pray that God would give them healing and strength for the days ahead, uh, the days ahead, and not just the president and the first lady, but all who have been touched by this particular disease. This week, we heard that a member of our church, whose name is Kathy, whose husband is Al, who has a daughter named Nakona, tested positive for COVID-19 as well. So we want to keep Kathy and her family in our prayers this week as uh, they work through this process. And I know that this particular virus has touched other members of our church and our community. And um, we appreciate it when you let us know that uh, you're dealing with this and we will keep you in our prayers. And if you are in need of any assistance, there are lots of people in our church who would love to be helpful. So prayers for all of those. I believe those are all my announcements. And so now we're going to turn our attention to the sacrament, the mystery of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and remember that In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, if you're blessed to be with other people this morning, we would invite you to share the bread and the wine with each other. In this church, typically, when we share the bread, we say, this is the body of Christ, and it's given for you. And when we share the cup, we typically say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. At this time, I would invite you to share communion with one another.
Now let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life in your mercy. Strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as I mentioned earlier in our service, this is the first Sunday of October when we typically, in memory of St. Francis, share a blessing of the animals. Um, Martin Luther, who was the first pastor of our particular tradition, had a beloved family pet and several of his writings related to the family dog I want to share with you now. The dog's name was Topol, which is apparently a German word that means fool, F-O-O-L. So that might tell you somewhat of what you need to know about Martin Luther and, and the way he related to, to a beloved pet. He, um, he had uh, occasion to say the following, the dog is the most faithful of animals and would be much esteemed were dogs not so common. Our Lord God has made the greatest gifts the most common. And uh, one time while Luther was at the family table enjoying uh, his evening meal, his dog happened to be at the table and he started begging for food. And Luther wrote, Oh, if I could only pray the way this dog watches the meat. All his thoughts are concentrated on the piece of meat. Otherwise, he has no thought, wish, or hope. And finally, when a little boy asked Luther if his puppy would go to heaven one day, Luther patted the dog on the head and said, Be comforted, little dog. You too, in resurrection, shall have a little golden tail. And now, let us pray. Gracious God, in your love, you created us in your image and made us stewards of the animals that live in the sky, the earth, and the seas. Bless us in our care for our pets and animals. And now I'm going to read the names of the animals that you sent in. In a minute, we'll get to see the, the slideshow. But let me read the names in the midst of this prayer. Manny, Inky, Max, Olaf, Patches, Stormy, Moe, Rita, Max, Dewey, Lucy, Noodles, Wyatt, Cookie Dough, Jelly Bean, Cheerio, Taz, Tonka, Sophie, Sophie, Dash, Bandit, Oli, Poppy, Bingo, Sunny, Wendy, Lefty, Gilligan, Sturgis, Rex, Valentino, Cheerio, Caramel, Scout, Olivia, Atka, JC, Lily, Lulu, Mia, Harley, Opie, Coco, Anne Marie, that's Coco Anne Marie, Euchre, Bob Dylan, Camo, Rainy, Sammy, Princess Greta Bell, and Saxton. Help us recognize your power and wisdom in the variety of creatures that live in our world. And hear our prayer for all that suffer overwork, hunger, and ill treatment. Protect your creatures and guard them from all evil, now and forever. Amen. And now we're about to share the benediction. Stay tuned. After the benediction, we're going to show a slideshow of all your beloved pets and animals. There'll be a time after that to share the peace with one another. And then after a few moments, we'll go into Penny's class. But first, let me say, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And uh, Aaron and Laura, I wonder if we should do our sending hymn and then go into our Blessing of the Animals slideshow. Coming right up. Thank you.
Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Elaine. And now for our slideshow of your beloved animals. We're gonna count all these animals and include them in the attendance numbers for this weekend. His bread and his chicken. That was so much fun, thank you all. And now for our dismissal. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and thanks be to God. Thanks everybody for being here today. You can stay and visit for a little bit on this platform and uh, momentarily in about uh, maybe five minutes, Penny Shemp's class on your identity will begin.